Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, coming to you from the backyard, so my glasses are a bit tinted. I hope that's okay for all of you. I'm glad to have you here today. As you know, I will be on a study leave for the next 10 days or so, but I'm happy to bring you this recorded service. For those of you visiting us, I am the Reverend Dr. Leonisa Artizone, minister at the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of the Catskills. Thanks to technology, we can be together even when we are apart. Welcome guests, visitors, members, friends to our virtual gathering, whomever you are, whomever you love, wherever you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here. If you are new to Unitarian Universalism, we are a liberal religious faith that carries no creed and welcomes all seekers into our fold. We are guided by seven principles and six sources that encompass the many ways we come to know and understand the world, ourselves, and the divine. At UU Catskills, we affirm that Black Lives Matter. We are a welcoming congregation for members of the LGBTQ family. We are congregational affiliate of the Ulster Immigrant Defense Network, and we are active voices in the effort to address climate change. Today, services will be a bit different because it will be pre-recorded. So I want to thank our in-process, in-formation tech production crew of Henry, Kristen, and Kathy. And I'd like to say if anyone else feels comfortable with this forms of technology to please reach out because we'd love to add you to our production team. We will have breakout groups afterwards so we can have our coffee and conversation even if it's with little boxes on the screen. So please stick around. All the music and videos we will use today are used with permission from the creators themselves or they fall in the public domain. I encourage you to visit our website uucatskills.org or our Facebook page to see about upcoming events. <clears throat> if you'd like to join our mailing list, you can add it into the chat or you can send an email to uuccoffice at gmail.com and we'll get you in the loop. This week, we will have Brood Awakenings um, Thursday morning at 9.30, led by Tom Hackett, and Bedtime Story Thursday evening, 7 p.m., led by our Director of Religious Exploration, Jane Podell. We will also have Women's Circle, which is meeting every Monday. You can reach out to the office or Pat Hurst or Rita Vanius for more information about that. And be prepared, we are coming into the time for annual meetings. So please keep time on the 31st, the 7th and the 14th after services for these important gatherings for the business of our congregation. Now please settle in, take a deep breath as we enter into this time apart from time. On this day, May 24th, 1803, Boston, Massachusetts, the Reverend William Emerson and his wife Ruth were preparing for the birth of a child. He was one of Boston's leading citizens, a liberal-minded Unitarian minister. A day later, on May 25th, a son was born and named Ralph Waldo. Although he would not live to see his son follow him in the ministry, his son would do so, if only briefly. At the age of 26, Ralph Waldo Emerson would be ordained as a Unitarian pastor in Boston. However, only three years later, he resigned, having come to believe the profession antiquated. As one Emerson scholar has pointed out, doffing the black of the pastor, he was free to choose the gown of the lecturer and teacher, of the thinker not confined. Emerson became the chief spokesman for transcendentalism. His first book, Nature, in 1836, expresses his belief that everything in our world, even a drop of dew, is a microcosm of the universe. Emerson was influenced by Hindu writings, such as the Vedas. At the same time, he developed ideas long present in the Western tradition, such as those of Plato. This is seen in one of his greatest writings, The Oversoul, that describes the collective indivisible soul, a supreme mind that every man and woman share. Emerson writes, 
We see the world piece by piece as the sun, the moon, the animal, the tree, but the whole of which these are shining parts is the soul. His concept of a supreme mind that we all share allowed transcendentalists to disregard external authority and to rely instead on direct experience on themselves. Trust thyself was Emerson's motto. It became the code of Henry David Thoreau and others of the day. Emerson became the leading voice of intellectual culture in the United States. His work continues to influence thinkers and writers around the world.
Our opening words this morning come from me. When the pain of the world gets to be too much, rest, breathe, come into this sacred space and become refilled. When the pain of the world gets to be too much, honor your sadness and anger and allow it to be transformed into compassion and action. When the pain of the world gets to be too much, protect your heart, but remember that your efforts are needed. When the pain of the world gets to be too much, find the inspiration to carry on in love. Come, let us worship together. And we'll begin with our unison affirmation. Let's all say it together, please. May we be reminded here of our highest aspirations and inspired to bring our gifts of love to all living beings. May we know once again that we are not isolated, but connected in wonder and joy to mystery and miracle in the universe, in this community, and in each other. And now we will light the symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith, faith our chalice. Hopefully you have a candle or chalice or something like that, and we can all light. And if you so desire, you can enter into the chat box where you are lighting. And I am going to light this chalice. It's working out here too. We light this chalice in grateful, loving community. Even in the darkest of times, may its flame light paths to courage, justice, and hope. Our first hymn is a bit of a treat. It's a variation on a favorite. You, you singer songwriter and Dutchess County resident, the wonderful Pat Lamana, wrote new lyrics for Gather the Spirit, and Jim Scott recorded them. I invite you to enjoy them, and if you'd like, you can try to sing along. I wrote this song 30 years ago so my friend Pat Lamana could give it this contemporary message. Gather in spirit, not face to face. Let's do what we can to flatten the curve. Wash your hands often and don't touch your face. This virus is something no one deserves. Gather on Skype. Gather on Zoom. Yeah. 
Thank you, Jim and Pat. Isn't that a great version there? Um, our Not For Children Only was inspired, you know, I was thinking about what to do and, and something I've been doing since uh, the pandemic uh, landed on our shores was screen capturing memes and other images that either made me laugh or made me think or, or helped me feel connected or thoughtful in some way. So I um, decided that our time, our story for all ages, what are we, not for children only, I'd like to share some of those. So I'm gonna share my screen again. If I can find the right PowerPoint this time. Okay. And share some of these things I've seen. Oh wait, that didn't work. Here it is, okay. There we go. Okay, so I made us a slideshow. Now I guess I'll read, and at home you can chat amongst yourselves while we go through some of them. This comes from J.R.R. Tolkien. I wish it need not have happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf. And so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to do is decide is what to do with the time that is given us. And I love this artist. Sometimes all we feel is fear, but there is more strength and love inside us than you can possibly imagine. And this goes to our conversations where we were talking about normalcy. If we get this right, we'll never go back to normal. And in the rush to return to normal, use this time to consider which parts of normal are worth rushing back to. And I like this one. All great changes are preceded by chaos. The Reverend Dr. William Barber says, this virus is teaching us that from now on, living wages, guaranteed healthcare for all, unemployment and labor rights are not far left issues, but issues of right versus wrong and life versus death. And I companioned this with when this is over, let's remember that it wasn't the CEOs or the billionaires who saved us. It was the janitors, nurses, grocery and food workers. I thought this was particularly funny, the idea of what social distancing means with three little critters huddling closely together. And here's one where I'm gonna bring in one of our own members here, but I kept my promise, please keep your distance. Six feet, Carol, we get it, six feet. And this is a lovely idea. I'm dropping the word lockdown from my vocabulary. I prefer to think of the next four or eight or however many weeks as a Ray Hui, because this is about honoring the earth, protecting the people, and nourishing the spirit all for the greater good. Kia kaha. I'm not hoping to get back to normal. I'm hoping we get back to something new, something better. I'm hoping that we will learn a way with the companion Talmud quote, if not me, then who? If not now, then when? My friend Ajamu. And Peter Reynolds, whose stories we've been reading, asks us, how big is your heart? Distance makes the heart grow fonder. Coupled with Pooh and Piglet. Where are we going, Pooh? Home, Piglet. We're going home because that's the best thing to do right now. 
And this is a nice checklist, a quarantine questions we can think about each day. What am I grateful for today? Who am I checking in on or connecting with today? And that might just be yourself only and that's okay. What expectations of normal am I letting go of today? How am I getting outside today, if we can safely? How am I moving my body today? What beauty am I either creating, cultivating, or inviting in today? I believe this was on Judson Church in New York City, some Rogers and Hammerstein. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of a storm, there's a golden sky and a sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain. Though your dreams be tossed and blown, walk on, walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone. I also liked these, I put these together because I liked the idea of the things that we can control and cannot control. And maybe if we just lie like that frog on a lily pad, we can remember the difference. Victor Hugo shares with us, even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise. And more Peter Reynolds, Peter Reynolds, we're all in this together. And this was an earlier one, keep calm and flatten the curve, which we are all in this together. And finally, I like this one. If we view ourselves as besieged victims who need to go into hiding, then we will cultivate fear and hoarding. If we view ourselves as a community working hard to protect the most vulnerable among us, then we will cultivate courage and helping. Mindset matters. And I decided to pair that with this mutual aid image of all we have is each other. Maybe I can make that available online for us. I invite us now to turn our attention inwards and enter into a time for contemplation and compassion. Breathe deeply. And as you do, let yourself fully come into this present moment. Take some time to reflect on any sadness or disappointments you are feeling. If tears need to flow, let them flow, feel what you are feeling, breathe and feel held by your community. I invite you to lay down your sadness, the burden you are carrying, the sense of your own shortcomings. Lay them down, let them not harm your heart for now. Take a moment now instead to bring a, to mind a joy or a blessing, something you're grateful for this week. Let those warm, joyful, blissful feelings fill your body, fill your whole self get warm with the memory of a small joy or even a big joy. Breathe deep again and feel held by your community. I ask you to join me in a spirit of prayer, spirit of life. Help us to honor our sadness, our grief, our worry. 
and to remember our resilience, our joy, and our support systems. During this time when the world is in pain, may we, remi may we be reminded that we are not alone, that we are part of a collective and part of something greater than just ourselves. May we draw strength and love and fortitude from this community and all of the communities of which we are a part. May we do what's best for the greater good, to take care of one another. And may we do this with hearts filled with love. Amen. Please join me in singing Spirit of Life. of our congregation takes lots of people, takes lots of time, and it also takes money. We've been doing a wonderful job of staying financially connected and I thank everyone for your generosity during our pledge drive and during our switch to online giving. Today I invite you to give generously as our half, di half plate donation will be shared once again for two more weeks for the month of May with People's Place, who is doing a tremendous job of feeding, I don't even know what the number is at by now, just doing wonderful, wonderful work. And we're delighted for some more special music, our very own Rob Becker recording Pack Up Your Sorrows for us today. Who's crying, talking to a stranger, naming the sorrow you see? Too many sad times and too many bad times, nobody knows what you need. But if somehow you could pack up your sorrows, give them all to me. Running in the darkness, looking 
for a spirit that's free Too many wrong times and too many long times Nobody knows what you see But if somehow you could pack up your sorrows and Satisfied mind. Too many highways and too many byways, and nobody's walking behind. But if somehow you could pack up your sorrows and give them all to me. Thank you, Rob. And thank you all for your generosity in supporting the work and witness of the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of the Catskills and the people we serve in the Ulster County and Greater Kingston area. So it's a strange day because I'm not with you, but I'm with you. And when the worship committee and I were gathering uh, a few weeks back and thinking about how I could get a Sunday off and what was the best thing to do, um, we decided this idea of recording and the committee suggested that I bring back a sermon that was helpful in the past and that might be timely again. And we decided to re-deliver a sermon I delivered on February 2nd entitled The Pain of the World. I wrote that sermon before the pandemic was in high gear, before countries went into lockdown, and now with the world really, truly, deeply in pain, I hope this sermon can give you some food for thought. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. Bright and early for their daily races, going nowhere, going nowhere. Their tears are filling up their glasses, no expression, no expression. Hide my head, I want to drown my sorrow, no to
as I was working on the service this week, that song, Mad World, by Tears for Fears, was playing on a loop in my head. <laughs> I've loved it since it came out during my first year of high school. The entire album, The Hurting, remains one of my all-time favorites. But this song keeps coming back to me, or at very least, the title, Mad World, captures how I feel most days. I want to let you in on a little secret about me. I have a pretty bleak worldview. It may seem surprising because for the most part, I am upbeat and friendly and feel compelled to spread love and joy. But the reason I am this way and do all these things is because on a regular basis and for many, many years, I've really felt that humans are awful. <laughs> it first occurred to me in my teens when I had a few devastating experiences, and then through a series of unfortunate events, I continued to think less and less of humanity. Not something your minister should admit to, <laughs> right? But I am admitting it because it's true. I imagine others in the room might feel the same way. And my doubt about humanity is and has been my core motivation to work for peace and justice my entire life. My father likes to remind me that I was a very sensitive child. I was serious. I actually have baby pictures where my brow is already deeply furrowed, like I'm thinking, oh no, I'm back. And apparently, I cried at the drop of a hat. Oh, but you already know that, because you still see me do that. I suppose I've always been an empath, hence my seriousness and underlying sadness. Actually, I think the word I'm really looking for is Weltschmutz, an untranslatable German word meaning world pain or a deep sadness of the imperfection of the world, or maybe when the world as it is doesn't compare to what you think it should be. So yes, I suffer from Weltschmutz. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Two weekends ago when I was staying at the Holy Cross Monastery, I got into a conversation with a few fellow pilgrims, and one of them, a young man about 20, was reflecting on the sermon we had just heard, and his desire to be genuine, and to be his real self in the world. And how hard it was. I engaged with him and replied with something like, yeah, it's really hard because the world just bombards us with images and messages that tell us to be anything but ourselves. The woman next to me said, no, not everywhere. <laughs> and the only thing I could reply was, well, I disagree. And I know it's strange, to hear someone who peddles in hope say something so negative. But the world can be rotten, and acknowledging that rottenness is what inspires me to do my work every day. I don't think this makes me a negative person, or a misanthrope, or even a pessimist. Actually, as I said in my ordination benediction, I want us all to be brokers of justice and joy. My Weltschmerz is an unending source of inspiration for trying to do better, to make the world better. So I cannot ignore the pain and suffering I see or hear about every day. We cannot, but neither can we let it crush us. My husband, fearing for my well-being a year or so ago, forbade me <laughs> as much as anyone could forbid me from doing anything, but, but forbade me from listening to Democracy Now! <laughs> for a good stretch of time. <laughs> because I would call him from the car, or one time from a closet at BOCES where I was working at the time, because I was crying and I had to tell him how awful the world was and that I couldn't walk into a room of teachers and act like what I was going to tell them actually mattered in the grand scheme of things. So we made the decision that I should cut back on <laughs> social media and radio programs and anything that forced my empathic self into too much darkness. But that is a place of privilege. I can turn off Amy and Juan. I can stop reading the New York Times when it arrives in my inbox. I can avoid Facebook and Twitter. 
But what about the people who are living through these things? They don't get to turn it off. And that brings me to the pain of the world. War, famine, drought, children in cages, refugees, children starving, unchecked greed, lying leaders, unjust justice systems, systemic violence, virulent racism, misogyny, religious tyranny, transphobia, climate change, unnecessary poverty, and the apparent death of our democracy at the hands of unscrupulous and self-serving elected officials. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I sum it up? Yeah. It's enough to make you throw your hands up, stick your head in the figurative sand, and just sleep, or watch TV, or shop, or take part in any other distraction that keeps us from really feeling our feelings, our sadness, our rage, our frustration, our disappointment, our weltschmerz. But we have to feel it because feeling it allows us to do something about it. So of course, addressing the pain of the world is an age-old question. Buddhism's <coughs> core teachings are about the nature of suffering. And the Buddha made a distinction between pain and suffering. He said, pain in life is inevitable, but suffering is not. Pain is what the world does to you. Suffering is what you do to yourself. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. So we can feel personal pain or the pain of the world, but it need not turn into suffering or something that debilitates us. And Jesus taught us that blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So if we give ourselves the time and space to mourn for the state of the world, we will find comfort from others. And Viktor Frankl wrote, we who lived in concentration camps remember the men who walked through the huts comforting others giving away their last piece of bread. They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a person but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. And Catholic priest and Franciscan friar Richard Rohr says, you can tell a lot about someone by what they do with their pain. Do they transform it or transmit it? All these teachings remind me that we are resilient and we can take what we see in the world and let it crush us or we can transform it. We can be resilient in our resistance, in our resolutions to help others, and to take action to dismantle unjust systems. And where do we find the strength, support, and comfort to do that? Right here. Right here in our Unitarian Universalist community. <coughs> Father Gregory Boyle, the founder of Homeboy Industries, says, resilience is born by grounding yourself in your own loveliness hitting notes you thought were way out of your range. Mm. So what is your loveliness? What is your gift? What can you do to address the ills of the world? Auden and Melville both put pen to paper writing poetry and novels. Roland Arzabal wrote songs. Father Greg started an outreach program for gang members. Our own members here write letters to TV stations, senators, newspapers. We march, we strike, we feed one another. We volunteer, we donate to our larger community, we vote. We remember to breathe before we speak so our pain doesn't get transferred onto someone else. We remember that we our community, that we are the change we wish to see in the world, and we are the support 
strength, and comfort we all need as we witness and live with the pain of the world. As the Talmud reminds us, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now. Love mercy now. Walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. So I ask you to think about this for real. What are you called to do in this UU Catskills community that helps us address the pain of the world? What's your superpower, your special gift? What can you share with this community? Writing songs or poems for service, designing artwork and brochures for us to reach out to the world, writing letters and articles, helping in religious exploration, greeting people warmly and welcoming them, volunteering at events, leading a small group ministry, coordinating efforts into our community, whatever it is, I wanna know. So let me know, let all of us know. Our pain must be transformed into something that shows our resilience. As Auden wrote, evil is unspectacular and always human. And we are introduced to goodness each day. So even with a bleak worldview and an overwhelming sense of Weltschmerz, we can find the goodness. <coughs> we can be the goodness. We can be the brokers of joy and justice that the world so desperately needs. May it be so. I know many of us have different ways of coping with pain and suffering. One of my go-tos has always been music, and in particular, opera. I can thank my parents for this love of opera that I have. And when I was creating today's service, the Redux, I could not stop hearing this aria from Torindo in my head. The final word repeated a few times is vincero which translates to, I will be victorious, I will win. I like the sentiment, but want to slightly change the conjugation to vinceremo, we will be victorious, we will win. Enjoy. Oh man, it gets me every time. <laughs> so our closing words come from Andrea Hawkins Camper. May we see all as it is and may it all be as we see it. May we be the ones to make it as it should be. For if it is not us, who? If not now, when? This is answering the cry of justice with the work of peace. This is redeeming the pain of history with the grace of wisdom. This is the work we are called to do, and this is the call we answer now, to be the barrier and the bridge, to be the living embodiment of our principles, to be about the work of building the beloved community, to be a people of intention and a people of conscience. Thank you all for being with us today. I invite you now to extinguish your chalice and say our words together. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of humanity, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. From you I receive, to you I give, 
together we share and from this we live. Thank you all for coming today. Sorry I couldn't be with you in person, but thank you for the break. I needed some rest. I hope you will all be back next week when Catherine will lead us on one of her spectacular musical worship services. Uh, I wish you peace. I hope you have a wonderful week or two or so until I see you in person again in June. Uh, June, when did that happen? So I miss you. I love you. Please stick around for coffee hour. Talk to one another. Fill your spirits and have a wonderful, wonderful day.